Hi, I'm Mark Lux, Extension Weed Scientist with The Ohio State University. We're talking about dandelion today, king of weeds. Dandelion is a what we consider to be a really great weed, and it's making a resurgence. Some other weeds are too. If you look at the kind of what's around me here, one of the issues we got into this year um, with our burn down situation and cold weather and things like that was my bee weeds are getting big and you know I'm our burn down herbicide's gonna work well enough and uh, we did point out at least in one news order article that you know the reason we went to fall applications back in the late 90s was because we had these masses of chickweed and dead nettle and other things that were just taking a long time to die in the spring and we weren't getting the speed and the complete burn down that we wanted in some cases and so we went to fall applications. We've kind of gotten away from fall applications lately, partly by accident and partly on economics and partly because we have some systems like the Extend system and the Enlist that people consider probably good enough that we may not need a fall application. But there are always consequences of when we change the system up. And one of the consequences of not doing a fall application every other year or something like that is we tend to have an increase in the population of those weeds and it makes our spring burn down situation more difficult. Something to keep in mind. Dandelion falls into that category. We've cycled on dandelion several times in my career here. If any of you have done this long enough, you remember back in that same time time period, late 1990s into the 2000s, we had a lot of dandelion. Um, it was a consequence somewhat of how we changed our herbicide use because of Roundup Ready soybeans. But I remember walking around fields in the fall where you couldn't see the ground, the soil for, for the dandelion population. And so we got those under control partly by going to fall applications, and we did the fall applications partly because mare's tail became more of an issue into the into the 2000s, but dandelion is just, you know, what we consider to be a great, a great weed. It's extremely adaptable, as most of you know. You have a weed like this in a no-till situation where it has lots of space, um, and then in a yard where it has to kind of conform and be flat, it'll do that, and it'll do really well there and survive mowing. So it's just very adaptable. Um, what it does over time, of course, is a plant like this gets a very big tap root. Anybody who's tried to dig out a dandelion, even in your yard, knows it gets a pretty good root on it. It's hard to do that. And this is a plant that just is really well established with a big tap root. And so when you start looking at control of a plant like this, especially as we reduce the number of applications and don't do fall herbicides and things like that, and then we expect, you know, whatever we're spraying to be able to control a plant like that, relative to a very small seedling plant. And there are seedling plants here around my feet. Um, there's some right over there um, also. So we have seedlings coming up, which would respond pretty well to a number of different herbicides. This one really won't. So when we start hearing people say, well, you know, I have resistance in dandelion to herbicide X because I can't control this one. I used to get control of dandelion. One of the reasons for that is as we've modified our system, you know, dandelion gets a foothold and they survive they get a bigger root, you know, they come back stronger the next year and they just get to be more and more difficult to control. If you come out of a prevent plant situation where you've had given it a chance to kind of do its thing on its own and, and not, not be hindered by crop and herbicides, and, um, it'll, it'll do even better. So, you know, it, um, you have the established plants and then you have seedling plants. There's two periods of uh, dandelion emergence of seedlings. There's typically right around now, there's a lot of new ones coming up. Um, you can see them here. Um, on a dandelion plant that goes to seed, and a dandelion plant can flower and go to seed in seven days. It's capable of doing that, just to give you an idea of how fast that can happen. That can even happen in the winter with a shot of warm temperatures. Um, and so you had plants that went to seed, and you have a bunch of new plants here. The seed that come off, the, come off dandelion, like a lot of winter annuals, are ready to go. Don't have a lot of dormancy. There tend to be, I think, a couple different types of seeds. Some have a little bit longer dormancy, but we have a flush of dandelion for whatever reason right here in a lot of this plots, probably some seed possibly from last fall, possibly from these plants um, as well. And so you can see it doing a couple different things. You got this established plant that's really hard to kill and then in the soybeans, and we just put a post application on this. So this is about the time that post herbicides are going on. You can see how they could be emerging after your post application and surviving. So when you come into fall, you know, they're ready to go and become a bigger plant and overwinter and put that tap root on. Some of the things we learned about dandelion back in that um, stage was that it, 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 a lot of times it took two applications to get dandelion, either a burn down followed by a post or a fall followed by a post or something like that that you had to have. And this was working essentially with stray glyphosate. Um, you had to have a couple different applications. If you start to shortcut that and go to one application, you're not going to get it all. So it, it tends to be really tough. And especially if you have like a delayed burn down and you haven't done a fall and you end up with plants like this, 
it's really hard out here. We, um, you know, we have a number of different burn down treatments out at the farm here in South Charleston every year. And, you know, sometimes you know, we basically don't get better than 50 or 60% control of plants like that with, our, with whatever burn down we're using. And then it just takes off. You haven't done a lot to that plant. Other times, if they're not that big, you know, we can get 80, 90, 80, 95% control and kind of hammer it, um, you know, with something like dicamba, which has a lot of activity um, on it in the spring. The other thing is there's just a variability with weather in terms of burn down. And we had a study across several states we did looking at applications on dandelion of glyphosate D4D every week for like six weeks through the early part of the spring. And what we found was that, um, you know, a spell of cold weather really hammered uh, herbicide activity on dandelion. It's just, you could see this, you know, and it, um, there was a trend where as it got cold and then after it was cold, it took them a while to recover. Um, and right, so it's very sensitive and mare's tail falls into that category somewhat, but dandelions, um, especially the bigger, tougher ones, are very sensitive to that. Uh, type of weather pattern. Again, you know, the recommendation here to get a handle on dandelion is do something in the fall. It doesn't take a lot of herbicide in the fall to do a good job on it. A lot of your standard fall burn downs will work pretty well. Glyphosate has activity, 2,4-D, dicamba, so a mix of any of those. The ALS inhibitors, like the clamiron that's in Canopy EX and the products like Basis and some of those also have decent activity on dandelion paired with, um, uh, you know, the glyphosate or, or the 2,4-D. Um, so just uh, keep in mind that if you're seeing an increase in dandelion, there's probably a reason for that. And you may have to step back and take a look at your program and decide how that needs to be modified to make sure you don't continue to have uh, something like this, which is really difficult to manage.